All right, I've got 6.30 on the nose. It is good to see everybody here, and uh, we praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel 22. And uh, this is in our devotion this week, if you're doing the daily bread. But I wrote this sermon, it was just crazy uh, when I got to it this past week. I wrote this sermon about 10 days ago, so uh, I was, you know, I, I was looking for the Old Testament and looking for something uh, that would encourage you. So uh, tonight I want to speak to you about David, David's song, David's song. Father, thank you for the night, and God, I just thank you for our church. Thank you for our Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. Uh, God, I thank you for the Juanas. I saw several families and several kids uh, that have never been in our church, and God, we just rejoice with you. We thank you for all that you're doing in our children's area. And God, we just thank you for Missy and Landon and all the workers and all the volunteers that are there. God, uh, we are so blessed. And God, just be with our Bible study. I thank you for these folks that are here. They are so faithful. Uh, they come every Wednesday night. And God, I pray that you just give them a special blessing. Uh, God, just thank you for your word. God, your word is yes. It is amen and it is right. And God, again, as I have prayed before, Lord, if there's just one thought, just something that crosses our mind that uh, reminds us of something, uh, God, we'd be forever grateful for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Real simple outline today, David's song, number one, the Lord delivered David. Okay, just two points. And if I ever get down to one point, I'll call it a Paul Walker sermon. All right, <laughs> two points. The Lord delivered David. Number two, the Lord rewarded David. And when I originally wrote this, I uh, went from uh, one, well, really, I guess it was 18 verses, and then I picked up another part of that. But there's no way we're going to cover 31 verses tonight. Uh, so I'm going to look at the first uh, seven verses, and then we're going to jump uh, to 21 and get the second point out of that. And basically what I did is I took a point out in the middle, uh, but I think these two points will really encourage you in the faith. And we know that David, you know, uh, he was a man after God's own heart. Uh, David made big mistake, uh, you know, uh, uh, with Bathsheba, uh, but David was the king of Israel. Uh, David was a man of war. I mean, he he really, uh, you know, uh, defeated folks around him, and he did a lot of uh, good things. But David, in his heart of hearts, uh, you know, and, and the deal about the temple was uh, he wanted uh, to build the temple of God, but God told him he could not do that uh, because of bloodshed. And of course, we know Solomon had, Solomon had done that. So let's look at the first seven verses. The Lord delivered David. Then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song uh, on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of, the, of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And we know many of the Psalms uh, David had wrote. Uh, so this is kind of a precursor uh, to what was going on there. And when you think of all of his enemies, uh, I just listed a few that he defeated the Philistines, the Syrians, the Moabites, the Edomites, and the Ammonites. Uh, those are the five main ones he defeated. And then, of course, uh, Saul, uh, you know, once God took the throne away from Saul, uh, he was after David. And I will say something about that in just a second. Now, look at the rest. Of verse 2, the Lord is my rock. And when you think of rocks, you think, in, you think of strength, you think of foundation, you think of something, and if it's a big rock, folks, you're not moving it, okay? So he comes down through here after he delivered, uh, after God delivered uh, folks, you know, these enemies from him, and then he pins this. And he, he just right through this first part describes God and what God is about. 
And folks, I'm telling you, uh, if you've been Christian long, uh, you will know, and if you've been through any battles or any trouble or any uh, trials, uh, folks, God is our rock. God is our foundation. He never moves. He's always the same. He is always with us. And my fortress, okay, fortress, uh, the word fort is there. And you remember even in the cowboy and Indian days where they built forts, uh, you know, as they were, uh, you know, conquering land, as, as they were uh, getting land. And uh, a fortress is a place of cover. A fortress is a place that you can go uh, where it is safe. And so the first two things uh, David says is, he is my rock, he is my fortress. And the third thing, he is my deliverer. And again, I, I go back to the cowboy and Indian days, and you know, it seems in some of the battles that, hey, the, the Indians are uh, defeating the, the soldiers, and you know, all at once you hear this trumpet sound, you hear this, dla, 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 and here comes uh, the cavalry in. Okay, and again, you know, that's a kind of an illustration of who God is. Sometimes when we are in battle, uh, with the forces of evil, it seems like we're losing. But I'm telling you, God can deliver us from any situation in life. Doesn't matter if it's a health situation, doesn't matter if it's a marriage situation, doesn't matter if it's a financial situation. God is our deliverer. And you know what else I found out about God? When He delivers, it's on His time. Okay? Sometimes. We feel like God has let us down, but I'm telling you, God has never let you down. He is our deliverer, the God of my strength. And folks, our strength is found in God. Even when you feel like you can't go on, you can go on because of God in whom I will trust. Folks, trust and faith, belief, these are all words. And when you got saved, you put your faith in trust in God. And that's the beginning of the journey. We should not doubt God. How many times did he tell his disciples in the, in the gospel about doubting God? He had done that many times, and uh, God is our strength, and he is trustworthy. My shield, all right, the shield was so important to a Roman soldier. All right, the shield uh, deflected the enemy's arrows, and they, they kept people alive. So we see all these descriptions of who God is. He's our shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. What does that mean? All right, my stronghold. He, he is the anchor, okay? And I love that song, The Anchor Holds. I don't care who sings it, man. I'm telling you, goosebumps come up on me, and I just think about God uh, being our anchor, our stronghold, and my refuge. The next two words, my Savior. Folks, I am telling you, God sent his son to die for you and I. God is our Savior. When we were drowning in the sea of sin, God came and, and he called us uh, to salvation, and he literally saved our lives. Uh, my stronghold, my Savior, you save me from violence. And here is a song. I won't sing it for you, uh, but I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Folks, I, I hope you have praise times in your life. And it wouldn't hurt to do it every day. It really wouldn't. Just sometime, let's just do it tonight, okay? When you go home and before you go to bed, you write the word praise at the top of a piece of paper, and you take about three or four minutes to write everything you praise God for. Folks, I'm telling you, you could do it for 10 or 15 minutes, all right? We have so much to praise him about. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And again, Saul was one of those enemies. Basically, for 10 years, he was hunting David. Five times he tried to kill him. His son, Jonathan, 
and David was his best friend. And so it was a hard, uh, you know, hard deal uh, uh, because he loved uh, uh, Jonathan and they loved one another. But yet Saul had that spirit, that evil spirit that came upon him. And again, he died a cruel death because of his choices. Verse five, when the waves of death surround me, floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Shalom surrounded me, and the snares of hell, or I mean of death, confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry entered his ears. Folks, I don't care what's going on in your life. God's prayer line is open 24-7. He hears our prayers. He, the Bible says he sees every tear drop that comes out of our eye, and he's there for us. You talk about an encourager, and really, folks, we need to be more, more encouraging than we are. You know, we, we need to, you know, to minister to people, and why? Because God ministered, ministers to us. He's always there. He is listening. He is sympathetic. He is, just, he is just God, and it's so neat uh, to, to know that he is there and hears our prayers. Psalm 27, go with me if you would, to Psalm 27. I love this psalm, and it is a psalm of David. Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Can you see some of the same things? written in 2 Samuel, or written right here. Whom shall I be afraid? Folks, we have nothing to fear. In our lives, we have nothing to fear. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh and my enemies and foes, they stumble and fell. And though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Think about armies, folks. All right, I remember Elijah. And we don't have time to go through the story, but man, he was surrounded by the enemy. And his, his servant just, he couldn't see it. And I'm telling you, God blinded the enemy. And it says, the war may rise up against me. In this, I will be confident. One thing I have desired from the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now we are in the house of the Lord this is God's sanctuary. But listen, my Bible says where two or three are together, gathered together, there God's in that presence. Even when I'm by myself, I am not alone. God the Father is in heaven looking over us. Jesus the Son is walking beside us, and the Holy Spirit is inside of our heart. Folks, we are never alone. We need to go to the sanctuary. We need to go to God's temple. We need to go to God for all uh, of our worries. To behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. What is he talking about, the secret place? We all like secret. We, we hate it when we don't know a secret. Or, or somebody tells you, I, I, you know, I, I can't tell you this now, but something good is going to happen. It's like, you know, what do you t- tell me right now? Well, you know what I believe the secret place is? The presence of God. Folks, I, I hope you understand what's going on in our church right now. Okay, six of the last seven Sundays we baptized folks. People are joining. I've already had two couples. On Monday, one on Monday and one on Tuesday, call me and say they're going to join the church. What is that? The presence of God is here. And so we have to understand that same presence is with us all the time. But we get to looking around and enemies start kind of defeating us sometimes, and we take our eyes off of God. And He shall hide me and shall set me high upon a rock. So we see the Lord delivered David. And the second point, verse 21, and the Lord rewarded David. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, 
And David wasn't being pious, okay? Because if you look in the Old Testament and in Deuteronomy, it clearly says there is a blessing and a curse for mankind. A blessing if you follow God. A blessing if you'll walk with God. A blessing if you will obey His commandment. And a curse if you break the laws of God. So even in David's time, he simply says, really the choice is up to us, okay? Whether we receive a blessing or we receive a curse. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he has recompensed me. Oh, folks, I'm just telling you, uh, man, we don't have time to go into justification and all that, but I am telling you, he, I mean, Jesus has made us right with God. Jesus at the time of salvation. And it says, For uh, I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God, for all his judgments were before me, and his statues I did not depart from them. I was also blameless before him. Now you have to understand, blameless is not perfection. Okay? None of us are perfect. Not one. The Bible tells us uh, that, that there's nobody perfect. No, not one. But yet, folks, we are forgiven. And to be blameless means that when we sin, we know that we sin. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. And God, if we are repentant, if we are truly sorry for our sins, God restores all right, not our salvation. We do not believe you can lose your salvation or send away your salvation. But he restores that fellowship and that relationship with God. Because if anybody knew about sinning, I mean, he did two of the, I mean, two of the what we call the big things, okay? A committed adultery and committed murder. But yet, folks, God forgave him of that. And it says in verse uh, 25, Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to, uh, according to, to my cleanliness in his eye. With the, merc- with, with the merciful you, you show yourself merciful. Oh, folks, I am so glad we serve a God of mercy. We all mess up. We all fall short of the glory of God. But I'm telling you, when we sin, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And he does that. It says, with a blameless man, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the devious, you will show yourself true. And again, he's just talking about the different kinds of people. You have one of two choices. All right, you can follow God or you can be on your own. And then verse 28, you will save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty that you may bring them down. So David here is basically saying, God, everything that has happened good in my life is because of you. Everything, uh, all the blessings that I have in my life is because of you. Now, I want to make this very clear, all right? Just because some people come into hard times or bad times doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that sin has caused that, all right? We know the story of Job. The Bible says in Job 1, matter of fact, let's just go over to Job. I just want you to see part of this. In, jo- in, in, in verse, the first part of Job 1, he said Job was upright. He eschewed evil. He stayed away from evil. Okay? It even insinuates he's my prized Christian. Okay? And then Satan and them have this conversation, and basically Satan says, hey, if you'll take your hand off of God, or, or off of Job, he will curse you, okay? And God says, nah, that's not going to happen. There's one thing you cannot do. Folks, I'm telling you, if Satan had his way, he would have killed Job. 
He, would, he wants to kill Christians. Why? Because on fire, Christians, I'm telling you, make a difference in, in life and in this world. Okay? And that's what, folks, I am telling you, what our country needs is a revival. A revival. I mean, Satan has just kind of lured us to sleep. But yet, Job did the right thing, and we know what happened. He lost his land, he lost his cattle, he lost his house, and then the worst one of all, he lost all 12 of his children. And the Bible says in verse 20, look at verse 20, then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell to the ground and worshiped. Folks, I cannot tell you how many times people, and folks, it's human instinct. It's people saying things. I have been where someone has died, and someone will say something, and I, I, I say to them, don't say that. God has not abandoned you. God is not mad at you, okay? Death is hard to deal with. But I am just telling you, God is in control. He chose to worship God even after everything that he lost. And then this kind of most, a lot of people could quote this, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Folks, I'm just telling you, we all have an appointment with death. If God tarried, which I'm still holding out for the rapture, folks, I'm hoping we all just get to go together. Wouldn't you like that? Matter of fact, tonight, I wouldn't even have to have an ice cream Sunday first. All right? I'd go tonight if God had just rapture us all out of here. But Job, folks, because of his relationship with God, he basically had done nothing wrong but all these things in a row. I mean, I think the last time this servant come this way, he thought, in his mind, I mean, you know, I know what I think. What, what is going to happen now? Hey, I've learned not to say that. What else could happen? Because a lot of times something happened. I'm not saying every time. But the point I'm trying to make, Job worshiped God in the most trying times of his life. And, you know, there's 41 chapters. His own wife told him to curse God and die. All right? His friends that tell him, Job, you made God mad. There's something wrong here. You, you have made God mad. You need to confess something. But Job had done nothing. And all these conversations are going on. But I want to go to the, the last part of Job. Job 42. The Bible says in Job 42, verse 10, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friend. What happens when we lose things? What do we do a lot of the time? Well, we pray. But our, our focus sometimes is on ourselves. And here's what I found out, folks. When we are helping others as Christians, that is some of the most fruitful, some of those, the, the best times. Because when you're ministering to someone else, you're not thinking about what went on in your own life. And I'm telling you, I do not understand Christians that quit on God. They just, they get discouraged. They get upset. They get mad at him. They do these things and they run away from God where really what they need to do is run towards God. And so Job prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. <laughs> Folks, I'm just telling you, God blessed Job because of his faithfulness, because of how he handled the situation, because he didn't waver. He didn't curse God and die. He didn't, you know, turn his back on God. And then it says, uh, and then all of his brothers and his sisters and all those who had been acquainted came before him to uh, eat food with him and in the house, and they consoled him and comforted him 
for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him, each one of them gave him a piece of silver and a ring of gold. Now look at, look, look at verse 12. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Then skip down to verse 16. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of day. I'm just telling you folks, and that's, that's one thing with me. There's one thing I do not want to do in my life. I don't care what happens in my life. I don't want to die a bitter man. I just don't. God has done too much for me. Uh, when we look at, and, and that's what David was saying. David said, yeah, I messed up. Yeah, you know, I, I know I lost a child. You know, I, I know all these things happen. But my God is good to me. My God blesses me. My God cares for me. My God hears every prayer that I pray. And I pray uh, that would be your thoughts. And, and, and no matter what's going on, folks, Focus on the good thing. See, Satan wants us to focus on the bad thing. He really does. But we as Christians need to realize, and here's what I want to say in closing. If we lose everything, there is something that Satan cannot take away from us. He cannot take our salvation away. We will always be saved. And knowing that when we die and we go to heaven, should produce joy in our lives. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just uh, your word. And thank you for David's song. And God, I thank you that uh, you delivered him and uh, really from many, many enemies. And God, uh, I thank you that you have delivered us from the weight of sin, from the consequences of sin, from, from, you know, just sin. Lord, you delivered us. And God, I thank you that you saved us and forgave us. And God, I pray that we would realize that there's really a lot we have to, to praise you for. God, when I just think that I can just go in my house and set, a, set my temperature on whatever I want to set it, uh, God, that, that's a blessing. When I think about as hot as it is, I, I don't have to walk here. I don't have to hide a Bible uh, if I go out in public. God, I, I haven't been hungry. Lord, we could all live on what we have in our houses for months. So God, I pray that we would realize, gosh, what a blessing. Lord, we do need to bust out in praise. We need to break out in song because you are so good. And God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessing. God, thank you for your hand on our church. And God, uh, I just pray that we never take it for granted. We are a blessed church. We are a blessed people. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.